Welcome to the CIO Evolution. In this podcast, we'll explore the Chief Information Officer's role in executing a new ongoing leadership imperative, digital transformation that promotes agility and resilience. How do CIOs upgrade legacy networks? What are the financial challenges CIOs face? And what are the security measures that are required in the new work from anywhere, mobile and cloud-based world? Hello, everyone. I'm Raj Krishna, Senior Vice President of New Initiatives here at Zscaler. It is an honor to be your guest host today on the CIO Evolution podcast. Today, we're going to talk to Howie Shu, Vice President of AI and Machine Learning at Zscaler. We're going to talk to him about generative AI, and we'll get his unique perspective through the lens of someone who's been at the forefront of this field for at least a decade. Now, with the surge of new generative AI tools flooding the market, an investment and interest nearing the apex of an infinite expectations, I would say, how he's going to help us understand through his point of view, what are we witnessing exactly? And what are the implications of this new flood of generative AI for businesses across a wide range of areas? So let's get started. Howie, it's great to have you here with us today. Thank you, Raj. I'm looking forward to this conversation. A lot of what we do, you know, we have been talking about it for months, and uh, you have been my partner in crime. And I think this is a show that we can tell the audience about what we've been thinking a lot for the last few months. Yeah, and how it's been great to work with you. And I think we're, we're really at the forefront of something very exciting in terms of how we're adapting some of these new generative AI models. So let's talk about that. Let's start with the ZChat demo, Howie. I read your article and I watched the video demo on CXO Revolutionaries. So tell us about, uh, tell us a little bit about ZChat. You know, I, I can already see the immediate value for CIOs. Can you walk us through how ZChat came to be? What are the use cases and what's been the initial feedback so far? Right. So millions and millions of people have tried ChatGPT over the last three months. And then many of them are very impressed by ChatGPT. But in the enterprise, there is always a question about, hey, what if you know, I want some answers that's depending on my own private data, right? Because you know, ChatGPT doesn't know my company's data, Zscaler's data. How am I going to leverage this new technology, very impressive technology, along with my own data? So ChatGPT demo was to showcase that, hey, we actually can leverage the ChatGPT technology advancement and my proprietary data and without you know, the data compromising of the data privacy. So this demo is actually to achieve that purpose. Yeah, I thought it did a great job of highlighting some of the art of the possible. And to me, as a, as a non-technical person, what's quite exciting about the demo, as well as just chat GPT in general, is that natural language processing interface, right? The ability for me to speak in plain English and for that to be translated to a SQL query or whatever it's translated to, and then for that model to go and parse that very large data set. Um, and I thought that the that the demo that's on CXO Revolutionaries was was eye opening from from demonstrating the art of the possible and for us to start to have a discussion about what some of those use cases are. I mean, I can tell you in some of my discussions with CIOs and CISOs, we're talking about things like how can we help them make better decisions mm -hmm. around infrastructure spend, right? Where can they potentially reduce their footprint in terms of spend, especially in this down market, or perhaps maybe giving them some data on what are some of their peers doing as it pertains to migrating onto certain types of applications. So what are some of the other use cases that you envision for CIOs and CISOs that can leverage this kind of technology, Howie? You know, I think uh, you, you, you need to look at a timeline, right? You know, if you look at a long term, I would say anything and everything we are doing is going to leverage the new technology more and more. Meaning that in the past, we hired, you know, lots of programmers. With AI, I'm not saying that programmers are going to be out of job, but however, programs need to figure out how am I going to work with the AI together so that my productivity is 2x, 3x, right? So almost everything we do, we need to think about how am I going to leverage the newer technology? So that's one aspect. Now, of course, it takes time, right? You know, just like uh, Microsoft has this thing called a co-pilot, uh, millions of programmers are using it, but still they are using that casually, right? When are we going to get to a point that, hey, this ChatGPT kind of the tool is going to be majority of the program producer, right? And uh, I think it will still be some time, some time away, but it's not going to be 10 years away. It's actually going to be, you know, in my opinion, two or three years away. So that's one aspect. 
The other aspect is, I think this is something you and I, you know, have been talking a lot, and you influenced that you are shaping my own thought on this too. You know, what is the interface for the enterprise to have, right? You know, in the past, it's a very predominantly dashboard, traditional workflow, right? And in the in the future, it could be more and more conversation based, right? Because you know, it's not like a there is necessarily something wrong with the dashboard, but dashboard, walking through the dashboard always takes time, you know, it takes some explicit programming ahead of time, but chat GPT kind of the conversation you are give you ability to actually know something, learn something without pre-programmed anything ahead of time, right? So I think this is going to be revolutionary. You know, I, I, I think you and I talk about this, right? The, the first time you saw a chat GP, Z chat kind of the demo, you said, I want Z chat to be here. I want this Z chat to be there, right? In our own uh, product. I think that that they will come, you know, it will take a little bit time for us to really integrate it into our own products. But I think that's the future. That's the future of every product. And Z scatter will be, you know, ahead of the curve. I think so. I think you, you opened my eyes when we were talking about a new product that we're building. And we, and we were talking about how the conventional way of building that is to build dashboards. And then, and then naturally what happens is you'll always be one step behind because then the customers will come to you and say, well, what about this dashboard? What about this dashboard? Then you go into a UI UX scoping exercise and you're, you're very constrained by what you can visualize on the screen. But if you can just have a simple NLP processing engine and it's just there and you can ask it questions in plain English and it can visualize dashboards for you, then now you've now you have this unconstrained data set that you can query and you can get insights at scale. I was talking to a CISO yesterday and he was very eloquently explaining how he wants his team to automate as much as they can. And right now they're spending a lot of time sifting through logs, looking for insights, doing a lot of these workflows manually. Imagine if you can just automate the dissemination of this information, you're able to query this, this data set using something like ZChat, and it focuses you up now to, to answer some of those higher level strategic questions. And you're, you now have time, and you're not sifting through logs, you're not writing SQL queries. So I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities for how this can free up time. I, what's, your, what's your point of view on some of the people who, who bring up the question of, hey, is this gonna impact my job? Or is this, I'm a developer, is it gonna impact how I work? Or some of the concerns and the fears that might be there around how this might drive a level of automation that might maybe potentially consolidate some, some existing jobs. In the very long term, I think, you know, our, the way we do our jobs will be very different, right? You know, I think whether the jobs will be different, very different, that's very possible. Just like 100 years ago, 90% of the job, or maybe 150 years ago, 100% of 90% of the jobs are farmer's job, right? And then now, you know, it's the other way around. So that's going to be very different over the very long term. In the very short term, when I say very short term, I'm talking about two years and maybe five years. That's sort of the short to medium term. I think what it comes down to is whoever can leverage or embrace the new technology, they are going to replace the people who are not leveraging the um, that, so it's not like uh, the bots are replacing humans' job, it's humans replacing humans' job, right? You know, humans who are more pr productive, who are more creative now, who, you know, who are kind of uh, get more out of it, you know, you, 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 you lead a team, right? You probably want people who are more, 2x more productive, right? So it's the same thing, it's human nature. So I think we are going to see that play out in over the next uh, two years, three years, five years. Uh, I don't think it's going to be massive, like, hey, this department is going to be replaced by bot. I don't think so, because, you know, one, everything, you know, takes time. The other thing is, you know, if you even look at a chat GPT, one of the reasons we had a huge breakthrough for the technology is human in the loop. Because, you know, chat GPT-3 model was released three years ago. It was able to do poems, programs, it was cute, the people were impressed about it, by it, right? However, one of the things people realize is it was a very interesting, but it's not quite aligned with humans, what I want. So the breakthrough this time, right, November 30th, 2022, OpenAI released ChatGPT. Why people were so impressed about it? Because, wow, the answer it gives, it would be my answer. So it's no longer just cute, but also aligned with me. Why three years ago versus you know now there's a huge difference because they put this in reinforcement learning in it. The the, the, the short uh, the short summary of that is they putting a lot of the human feedback into the model so that the model is a lot more aligned with the humans' expectation. So that's a major breakthrough. 
I mean, doing poems, doing program, GPT model was able to do that even three years ago, maybe five years ago, you know, but this time around, because of the human in the loop. So back to whether we are going to replace human, you know, human's job. I think human in the loop will still be the major theme for, for quite a bit of time. It's not going to be a bot end to end, doing anything and everything. The entire company just needs 20 bots and then, no, <laughs> you know, maybe one of those days, you know, in the very, very long future, but, you know, I think for the foreseeable future, you know, human in the loop is very important. Leveraging the new technology is very important. These two things are very important. Yeah, I would agree with that. In fact, I remember reading some article a few years ago, and it was talking about how over the last hundred years, whenever there's been some sort of a technology revolution, machines, the automotive, computers, and we moved from an agricultural farming society into more of a knowledge-driven society, there's always been this fear of, well, what does this mean for jobs? What, you know, is this automation going to kill my job? And it's actually always resulted in the increase of the number of jobs. Yeah. And I feel the same way. I think in this particular instance, we're actually gonna see, yes, we will see a certain shift in the types of jobs and how we leverage these tools, but I don't think this is gonna be a job killer at scale. I actually think it's gonna be a job enabler at scale. And we're gonna see more and more of knowledge economy type of jobs. So just, I, I, I thought it was a fascinating, fascinating concept of how this has been a recurring theme. I remember reading some, some headlines from the New York Times in the 60s and it was like, you know, Will this automation kill jobs at scale? And that and that's that prophecy has never really come true, and I don't see it coming true. History always history. repeats itself, right? Yeah. For 150 or 200 years, you know, the new technology is going to replace humans, and the people are going to be out of job. That yeah. never happened. You know, we are only going to have more and more jobs, right? And in just fact, a different type of jobs. Yeah, and in fact, one thing that you said about poems struck a chord with me. I remember on LinkedIn seeing a Zskiller SC had used ChatGPT to generate a poem about Zscaler. And I remember reading the poem and being very moved. And it was, I mean, our, our marketing team is amazing, don't get me wrong, but it was better than anything that anyone in marketing could have written themselves. So I think that started to showcase the, the power of what some the of- The breakthrough yeah. we have this time, right? It's not just, uh, you know, cute, but also very useful, applicable, right? And it was very cute too, so I thought- and Cute I thought too, was... right? <laughs> you know, useful, being useful yeah. and being cute at the same time. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So. Let's let's talk a little bit about ChatGPT and maybe how it can be applied to security. Um, yep. So, uh, cybersecurity practi practitioners, how can they use ChatGPT and other AI language models to counter some of these tools that are generating malware and phishing and doing things like social engineering? For example, just today, uh, Zscaler CISO Deepan Desai warned organizations about how large language models can be used to avoid unintentional data loss and to avoid or cor correct vulnerable code developed by it. And more and more experienced attackers might use these models to create polymorphic code, for example, um, so that their existing malware can better evade detection. So these tools are also available to hackers. So any thoughts or ideas on how cybersecurity practitioners should be thinking about ChatGPT and using these to, to do a better job with security? Yeah, I think, you know, you kind of already laid out the framework, right? You know, you, you referenced, uh, you know, our CISO deeper mentioned that, hey, with ChatGPT, with this new technology, you know, more dangerous things can happen, right? People will, you know, potentially during the ChatGPT conversation, they leak companies' information, right? That's one. But the other thing is leverage the tool to do target phishing, right? Before target phishing was already easy. Now it's going to be 10 times, 100 times easier, right? And even more targeted, right? You know, you can write such a, uh, like a story that would move you even, right? You know, you before, like you receive this email, I don't believe it, right? Now, right, Raj, you get, get this email, you might be moved by the sort of the content. It's, that's kind of a more dangerous, right? On the plus side, good guys, we have a better tool as well, right? In the past, you know, when I sift through the logs, right, you know, I have to figure out what's the pattern, you know, eyeballing it, right? Now I can kind of ask a ChatGPT or a ChatGPT-like technology that, hey, what's the pattern in it, right? What is the anomaly in it? Can you give me a summary what you see with a thousand lines of logs, right? You know, actually one of my friends asked me just, uh, you know, two days ago, he sent me this logs and he said, hey, can ChatGPT do this? And I, I thought, originally he thought, you know, ask ChatGPT to write program. We talk about all day long, right? Mm -hmm. It can do that. 
But you know what he really wanted is, hey, I have those logs. Can you identify the anomalies? <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't realize that was his, you know, his question. And then I said, yes, you can. And he was very excited because you know he would have spent all the time. Now the bot would. Now of course, again, bot won't replace everything, but at least. It, speed up things right you know it used to be it take 10 minutes for you to sift through right you know hey is there any sort of variation you know you know keep track of this metrics now you have a bot immediately tell you something so i think it definitely help help you so the way i look at it is it increased the productivity of the bad guys unfortunately but also increase the uh, productivity of the good guys. I mean, this is the theme, you know, speaking of our history repeats itself. This is the theme for cybersecurity world over the last 30 years, right? Every time there's a new technology, right? Internet, mobile, cloud, it helps the bad guys and it helps the good guys. I do believe that this time around, the good guys, we always say we have, you know, in the US alone, there are like a four, four million uh, security professionals we are lacking. I think some of those void can be filled by ChatGPT because what do they do? They look at your logs. They kind of the, so so give you a summary of what's going on. Exactly. I do think you know, right. You know, this four million jobs. You know, being you know, we are not able to hire. It has been going on for a while. I think the next two or three years we should see ChatGPT step step in and then and then, and then fill the void or some of the void. I definitely hope so. I mean, with, there's so many customers we speak to that spend so much time on this and this type of thing. And the ability for ChatGPT to make an impact, to reduce the cycles it takes, to get to the heart of an issue, or to get to the heart of a trend, I think will truly be game changing for some of these Yeah, teams. Raj, you talked, you spend a lot of time talking to the CISO, CIOs, right? Just, uh, you know, yesterday you said, hey, I talked to four CISOs in, the, in a row, right? <laughs> what did you hear from CISO when it comes to ChatGPT? I'm just curious. Have they started asking lots of questions? What's their reaction? Or are they just, hey, Zscaler, go take care of this for me. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I'll say that they're not necessarily asking about ChatGPT in particular, but they're asking the perennial question of, well, two or three questions. The first one is, what is really going on in my environment? Because there's so much data that's coming in and they, they many times have their socks or their knocks and their CM and their source systems and they're generating thousands and thousands of alerts. But what are the things that they should really care about? So that's, that's their pinpoint. Yeah, so it, number one is, what should I care about, right? And then number two is, what do I do about it? What is the action that I should take? And Zscaler, why don't you be a little bit more prescriptive in your guidance? Or how can you help my teams be a little bit more specific or prescriptive? And what are the policy actions that they need to take? So very much right now, they're sort of on their own. They're at the mercy of searching for a needle in a haystack. And how do we become a little bit more intelligent in making some of these recommendations and sifting through some of this data to give them findings? So when I, when I look at those asks and I read between the lines, this now forces me to realize that ChatGPT can play a big role here, right? And right. The one we demonstrated with the Z Chat, right? You know, it's kind of a you have all the user data, you know, application data, but you wanted to know, hey, who's using the applications? I mean, still you have to use a lot of the awkward ways, right? Manual ways, but the one we demonstrated, right? You just ask Z Chat, hey, you know, which user using which you, which application? Boom, exactly. you get the answer, right? Exactly. So in terms of the sifting the data, sifting through the data, right? Processing the data, hopefully this is a big productivity boost. I think it will be, and I think that's why they, they are very excited about it. So some of the some of the demos that are on the website, Zchat de demo that you created, I've been showing those to CIOs and CISOs. And their immediate reaction is, wow, I think this could be uh, a great tool for our teams to be able to go in and get these insights more quickly. So they, they do have a strong reaction to it, but it's very much founded in that core need for them, which is help me understand what's going on and help me understand what I should do about it. They don't necessarily care about ChatGPT in particular, but they care about answering these two questions. And then we talk about how ChatGPT can potentially be used for that. And there's a lot of excitement around that, which is, which is interesting. So let's, let's talk a little bit, Howie, about how ChatGPT, last year before ChatGPT was unleashed to the world, there were AI concerns centered around ethics and bias and fairness, and the concerns have pivoted to accuracy and truth and other issues raised by black box models and their output, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's not as if the previous concerns have disappeared. In fact, they've somewhat been amplified by this now very openly available technology um, and how widespread its usage is, right? What's the best path forward for IT leaders to address these concerns? And 
should there be standards bodies or should there be industry organizations that are formed to help or what are, what's your point of view on some of these areas yeah first first of all just regarding the bias you know the issues right uh, surrounding the chat gpt or the ai in general i think that's not a news i mean i would even argue even without ai just the digital the di digitization uh, in general, speed up a lot of things, right? Because, you know, it used to be like two people talking, but if you can kind of program it, you automate a lot of things, right? You suddenly uh, can, can amplify both good things and uh, amplify the bad things. For instance, I have some um, biased data, right? If without AI, without the digital um, programming, the bias is there, right? But people process that in the analog world, it's slow, but in the digital world, Right, suddenly a billion people see it, right? Suddenly the AI can automate the things so that a lot of people, so it's kind of amplified, right? But we amplify good things and amplify the bad things. So, so we can't just say, oh, because the potential of amplify the bad things, we should ban the technology, right? So we should contain the, 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 the consequence of the, um, the potential bad things. So what does that mean, right? There got to be, to your point, right? There got to be best practice. There got to be some standard, right? There got to be some work. So in the ZChat demo, we actually what we articulated is it's not we are not using we are not using ChatGPT as is. We actually bring the answer back to our platform, right? Our own generative AI platform. We sanitize the information, right? So we also sanitize the output. We make sure that we don't get a customer information mm -hmm. to ChatGPT, right? Even though you know a consumer may actually leak some, you know, his own PI data. But for us, we wanted to make sure our, our customer data is not leaked. So we actually have a platform doing that sanitization of the data coming out of, uh, going to ChatGPT and then getting data out of the ChatGPT precisely to tackle the issue you are talking about. Because we don't want PI data out. We don't want the bad things coming back and then just to go straight to, the, uh, to, to, to our customer's output. So we have to deal with it. So, so from that point of view, the, the answer, my answer to that question is, yes, you know, it's kind of a, uh, there could be danger, right? Question is, how do we contain it, right? So the platform-wise, right, you know, the, what kind of problem we want to chat GPT to solve, we, we need to be thoughtful ahead of time. I totally agree with that, especially we sell to the Fortune 500. We sell to the, Glo to the G2K. We're talking about financial customers, healthcare customers. So we always design with privacy as a core principle and being very cognizant of the fact that, yes, these are large language models, but we have to make sure that no data leaks, for example, that no sensitive data is exposed, the right treatment of PII, personally identifying information. So I, I totally agree with that. And these are areas that as we navigate these new waters together, we have to be very cognizant of. So thank you for those insights, Howie. So I wanted to, to ask you a bit of a speculative question, if you don't mind. What should cybersecurity leaders expect to see for product level integration with chat GPT API technology? I'm sure there's already customers that have ideas for how to augment our existing UI to say, for example, querying logs for, from ZIA or ZPA or ZDX. So what are, you, what are you comfortable sharing in that regard, Howie? Well, I thought it's your question. <laughs> uh, it's our question. It's our question. <laughs> Look, you know, you and I discussed this uh, for, for, for quite a bit, right? I think direction-wise, we wanted this sort of the conversation UI get into our product. It's going to be gradual, right? It's going to be, you know, to start with, it probably will be experimental, right? It's not going to be boom. I mean, we talk about the issue with dashboard, but you are probably the first person who would say, Dashboard is not going away anytime soon, right? You know, you wanted to strengthen the dashboard, at least for the foreseeable future. So I don't see the uh, conversation UI being a replacement of the dashboard for our product and for most of the enterprise product for a long time or for at least, uh, you know, for a few years, next few years. However, I do see that a conversation UI will start to show up in our product, right? Initially, hey, people, it's kind of a, another experimental feature. This is an interesting feature. And then maybe, you know, your, your kind of a mission critical stuff still, you know, rely on the conventional uh, UI, right? But gradually, people have more and more trust in it. And I see, oh, this type of questions, I should have used the conversation UI. And gradually, right, you know, I think a lot of the long tail 
questions can be answered by Conversation UI. So I think, you know, uh, hopefully we will let our customer enjoy, you know, the uh, some of that in the, at least in the experimental way um, in 2023. That's the goal you and I have together. Well, absolutely, Howie, and it's been great to work with you, and I'm really excited on some of the new products that we're building and how we can leverage ChatGPT as a technology. So thank you so much for the time. And in fact, we were talking about that poem, Howie, that ChatGPT wrote about Zscaler. So I wanted to read that poem because it, it did move me, and I thought it was a fascinating example of how ChatGPT can produce some pretty eloquent output. And, nice. uh, and obviously, one can take that output and shape it, but this, was, this is the raw poem as it stands. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. In the cloud above the fray, a guardian of the digital way, Zscaler stands watch day and night, securing all that's in its sight. With tools and tech beyond compare, it keeps your company's data safe and fair. From threats that lurk near and far, Zscaler keeps your business a shining star. It's more than just a firewall, you see. It's a partner in your company's security. With AI and machine learning on its side, Zscaler keeps your data protected worldwide. No need to worry, no need to fret. Zscaler's got your digital assets covered, and yet it does all of this with ease and grace, giving you peace of mind in this digital space. So if you're looking for a guide to keep your company's digital hide, look no further than Zscaler, my friend, a true and trusted partner to the end. Wow, this is amazing. Right. To your point, right, we have amazing marketing team. You know, we will keep them busy for <laughs> for a long time to come. But this is a truly complementary to yes. a lot of the work, right? You know, it kind of a pretty much summarize what we do. Yeah. Right. So we asked ChatGPT, OpenAI, to write a poem about ZChat. And this is what the poem said, okay? Amidst the world of tech and code, Zscaler ZChat now takes the road. With ChatGPT by its side, communication can't be denied. The demo shows how they integrate to offer a seamless chat debate. The AI model is at the core with Zscaler security to explore. From answering queries in a snap to keeping threats off our lap, Zchat proves to be a reliable mate in the ever-growing world of cyberspace. So here's to Zscaler and ChatGPT, their partnership we can't unsee. Together they bring a sense of ease to the tech world they aim to please. Howie, Shu, VP of AI ML, I'm Raj Krishna, SVP of New Initiatives. It's been a pleasure here to have been with you on this podcast. Thank you very much, everyone. Do check out the ZChat demo on CXO Revolutionaries, and we'll be with you very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to the CIO Evolution. Check back with your podcast provider regularly for more episodes. You can find more episodes along with other podcasts on the CXO Revolutionaries website at revolutionaries.zscaler.com. Statements by Zscaler podcasters and guests are informational only and should never be construed as legal advice. You should consult your legal advisor on matters related to you or your business. Zscaler makes no warranties, express, implied, or statutory as to the content of this podcast, and it is provided as is. Content on this podcast may contain forward-looking statements that are current as of the date of the recording and subject to change. These statements are subject to the safe harbor provisions created by the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Full legal disclaimers are available at revolutionaries.zscaler.com. Copyright 2021.